Hey, Marco, how are you doing? Hey, hello, doing good. Uh, I just updated the pull request uh, uh, with some uh, uh, some of the scenarios a little bit more fleshed out. Um, I'm just going to post that here in the chat. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to get this published before the meeting, um, so um, I'll give you a chance to read. So um, I, I was uh, reading through the document um, mm -hmm. and I have one question. Um, so, so in our use case uh, with, with the current Notary V1, we are also looking at something like a self-service portal or something like that where, where teams can create their repositories and the, uh, and the keys belonging to those as well authorizing mm -hmm. uh, or deauthorizing delegations um, at the first side i don't see this back in in these uh, key management scenarios would it be something we we need to add to notary v2 as well um so let me understand that use case better is that essentially saying that if an administrator has created a root key, uh, they can give permissions to others through some portal to get delegate keys from that root? Um, 
yeah, so um, you have seen the demo last week, right? Right. Um, so, so currently uh, we we connect this uh, this solution to to one notary server, um, mm -hmm. and in there someone can just create uh, some some target keys and um, add delegations for for that given target. Um, but now with, within our organization, we we don't have one registry, but we have many registries uh, as well, working with Docker Hub. Um, yep. So, so we need to manage keys for all these different solutions. So, our ID with Notary V1 was, if we want to manage that till till the time Notary V2 arrives, we need some self-managed portal. Or let's say your team is going to publish um, X number of new Docker images. Mm -hmm. So let's say uh, I want to re release Docker image A, B, and C. Um, then I would create uh, in this portal the uh, um, repositories and then based on our IAM system um, we give people um, access to uh, manage these repositories yep. and then they can uh, themselves uh, uh, add delegation keys remove delegation keys uh, etc from those repositories Right. I think one of the things that we were trying to do with Notary V2 uh, was split the registry from the uh, signing component, right? Um, and so rather than going having like a Notary uh, per registry, um, I think the approach here turns into you have like a single service that's telling you essentially uh, which public keys to trust and which like delegates have been revoked uh, uh, and, and that shares that information. Um, but you can essentially publish uh, to any registry uh, with one uh, set of keys if you wanted to. Uh, and then on, this, on the flip side, anyone that's actually pulling containers, um, they can also define uh, um, registry independent keys. So like they'll say, here's the keys that I trust. Uh, and regardless of whichever registry you're pulling containers from, uh, you can validate against that. Um, I think this enables us to do things like uh, uh, migrate containers from one registry to another. Um, I think, you know, as I've been flushing out some of these use cases, uh, what it's kind of making it more clear for me uh, is uh, what does the, rather than a key management service, what's almost like a key sharing service look like? Uh, in terms of how am I sharing my uh, root public keys with others. Um, uh, and, and I think that's kind of like a component that uh, uh, notary, like the notary server aspect of it is almost turning into uh, where rather than hosting signatures, it's hosting for like, you know, uh, here's my developer identity, here are my public keys, and here's the keys I've revoked so far. Okay. So, so okay, then, uh, then we have, um let's say one, one notary server to manage the keys for different registries, but what if we have a big organization uh, where there are many, many um, Docker repositories, uh, independent on which registry this is, um, how, how can we ensure that uh, a team can self-manage their delegations I think that's one where we will want to define more on what the functionality of the key management service turns out to be, right? Like I think here there's a few different options in creating delegate keys. Uh, I think this comes, this is something we'll need to flush out more in terms of how are those delegate keys created, right? Um, right now, um, I think what I have spelled out here is just the steps that need to get taken. Um, I think there's a very good call out that you're saying in terms of like, you know, if we want this to be a centralized service, um, how would that operate? And I think that's one where the key store kind of matters in the sense that uh, if the delegate keys are being stored on local machines uh, in terms of like the hybrid scenario, um, then really it's a matter of wherever the root public keys are being stored. Uh, that you can get the um, 
uh, the, you have a, you have access to kind of go get those signed um, to get whatever you need signed for the delegate key to be chained to the root key. Um, so I can add um, I think some steps in there that calls out. I think this would be line 38. Uh, sorry, line uh, uh, 39. The publisher creates new delegate keys on local machine that chain to root key. Uh, I think that one can get flushed out more in terms of what the uh, the design there would look like where. Uh, if you can specify where these root keys are stored um, based on some identity access management, you can go get your delegate keys signed by that root key. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I was thinking um, in, in our situation, we, we have clients where uh, the, there is a requirement that, for example, they, they cannot connect to the internet. So with, with this solution, that means uh, there is one notary server somewhere in the cloud um, so what about if, if this client needs to run a notary server in their internal network but they still need to be able to pull images from from docker hub for example um, so i think the the key management aspect of it may not necessarily be done through notary um, I think the key man, as in sort of like what we, what, what's traditionally been considered the notary server, right? Uh, the key management would be something that's more of like um, a publisher only solution, right? Because it's, and, and by publisher, I mean everyone that's involved in sort of like building and, and getting a container into a registry, right? Um, yes. Notary would be something that you need for communication between the publisher and the deployer. Um, so here, I think this goes more into the uh, uh, key management. And I think uh, this is one where um, if we look at key management, there's going to be different ways of doing it. Some people may do it through like a local key store. Um, some people may do it like uh, as you are in terms of like, you know, where you're protecting your roots and then you're authorizing others to get sort of like uh, uh, delegate keys. Mm -hmm. um, and there you, know, you may have multiple roots that you're creating and giving like, you know, roots across different teams or different organizations. Right. So yeah. I think the hybrid scenario flushing that out and how those keys are delegated uh, will address uh, the uh, delegate key generation. Uh, but the notary essentially becomes the more of the, like, you have a root key. How is that root key available to people that are deploying to know that this is the root key for this publisher? Um, and I think there we'll want to list out what those scenarios are, right? Because uh, there's going to be cases where that's a, uh, that's a private notary server being used within an organization. Uh, it could be a public notary server where, you know, you're sharing uh, sort of like a, anyone that's, you know, publishing containers publicly. Um, there can be notary servers that uh, potentially are hosted in air gap regions, right? Um, so I think the this is one where I want to go back to the larger group and, and kind of uh, go with this proposal of uh, what the notary server is changing into. Um, because the notary server today is hosting all these signatures, which I don't think is needed. Uh, it really needs to become more of a uh, root key store and a revocation uh, list store, right? Uh, and then I think the, the point you're bringing in is the delegate key generation, which I think goes into the hybrid scenario. Um, and then that's one of the things I think we want to flush out. Because uh, mm -hmm. I have, I actually have, uh, I'd also like to get your thoughts and sort of like, you know, uh, when we do, for example, the local key store, right? Um, are we go? Are we saying that, like, you know, we're going to allow um, root keys to be stored in plain text, uh, or do we want to actually kind of specify a key store? Uh, because then that key store can become part of how the key management is done, right? Uh, we can specify yeah. and say that you know, if, you, if you store your root key this way. Uh, put some access control in front of it, and then all of a sudden you have uh, a system that you can use for uh, uh, delegating uh, keys from there. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, what what I was thinking is if uh, if um, so, so I'm just talking about the web interface it makes it more tensible, especially for users or people who need to use this in a, in a bigger organization who are not that deep into the topic. So let's say mm -hmm. um, um, we have a web 
application which integrates with the uh, the enterprise uh, single sign-on system uh, based on that uh, this web application we can uh, uh, define some role-based uh, access control on, on different features and there mm -hmm. people can just define okay for this repository um, uh, a b and c uh, is allowed to uh, publish images so that could mm -hmm. be CI jobs, but also individual developers. Um, and similarly, we should also be able to remove those keys and um, yeah, to prevent that uh, anyone uh, randomly creates those uh, repository um, keys. We could, for example, uh, limit that to some kind of admin user who, who takes care of the, uh, that part. So that allows us yeah. to give some self-service uh, portal. Um, yeah, I but, call but that out in the key rotation and revocation use cases. Um, yeah. With yeah. that, I think what I need to kind of add in now is uh, elaborate publisher to not just publisher, uh, but in some cases you have an admin user and you have a delegate user, right? Um, yeah, so the, the admin user is more or less someone who is able to create target keys, uh, maybe root keys, uh, depending on, on what the strategy is. Uh, currently, we, we just use a single root key um, per registry. So for a, a internal registry, we deploy this web application we have as we, we didn't made it uh, in, in such way yet uh, that we can support multiple registries. With another EV2, that probably isn't required because the, the keys will be reusable across registries. So that's, that's right. from the publisher side. But uh, what I'm still not entirely, uh, or what's still not entirely clear to me is what, what happens. Uh, let's say I, I now register which keys and which delegations are, are in place. Um, that's registered against this single notary server. Because whenever I create those keys, uh, we also communicate with a notary server, so it's known to the notary server. But mm -hmm. what what if I now have uh, this internal server um, or this internal notary server? Um, how how do we sync up different notary servers? Maybe air gapped. So people can still use it. So, so let's say uh, in our development environment, um, we pretty often need uh, access to Docker Hub because some of our images depend on images from Docker Hub. But in the runtime environment where uh, we run our products, um, we might just want to only run against this uh, private registry where we have published our own images so we can keep that in a closed network environment. So the, the right, I think the 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 part about like the delegate key chaining to the root, um, that information should be part of the signature, right? Um, so mm -hmm. you so, don't so necessarily it, need to go. To, yeah. So, so the solution there is more or less like how it works with, with TLS certificates uh, for, for securing uh, your, your HTTPS traffic. Is it that we, we are going to treat these root certificates and maybe an additional layer of root certificates, just like you have uh, certificate authorities, intermediate certificates, etc. Um, and that we install those um, certificates, like the root certificates, intermediates, we install that on the system. And then by definition, everything created underneath that um, structure is trusted. Right. Um, and I think I put in like a, uh, let's see, uh, whether we wanted to do this where we wanted the intermediates, uh, that's an open question that I had. Um, for line 62 uh, in terms of like, you know, um, do we envision having this would be would be useful? Um, because the question here comes in like, you know, what's the guidance that we give? Like, you know, just create a new route or create a subordinate. Uh, I think uh, subordinate like from large organization perspective makes a lot of sense uh, because then you have different levels of control, right? 
Yeah. Uh, and so I kept it as an open item because uh, I, I didn't, I wanted to get some additional feedback on that. But yes, you're absolutely right. I think that's the, I think that makes uh, the signature validation uh, independent of registry. Um, you can do this in air gap regions. It becomes a question of how often you're syncing it, how often you're getting sort of like the revocation list. Uh, it moves more towards more of the TLS format. Uh, and I think this also yeah. creates the potential of so trusting like public certificate authorities um, where, um, you know, if you want to use uh, sort of like a uh, public cert issuance, you could potentially go leverage one of those to also kind of get certificates and use that as a, as a signing mechanism as well. Yeah, exactly. Because um, uh, in, in our research department, I have also been looking at, for example, uh, let's say um, if you want to use modern technologies like HTTP, uh, server push or uh, GRPC kind of services, you, you need to run them on TLS. Um, mm -hmm. But the problem or the difficulty with many uh, of the development teams is they, they don't know how to get certificates or you have to struggle with these uh, um, self-signed certificates which are not trusted everywhere. So right. I was also looking at how we could utilize HashiCorp Vault where we could set up um, a uh, root certificate or basically import our company root certificate in HashiCorp Vault, then uh, depending on our strategy, we could uh, create uh, development intermediates, uh, QA intermediates and production intermediates. And um, based on those, you can define policies in HashiCorp Vault. And with a policy, you can uh, say, okay, someone who uh, retrieves a token with this policy, is allowed to create certificates or refresh certificates or whatever. And based on mm -hmm. that, you basically allow people to self-manage their certificates. So you could say, okay, developers are allowed to uh, issue new certificates for, for development, so for CI, but also for local development on their own laptop. Um, mm -hmm. And those certificates, because they are signed by the intermediate and the, the upper root certificate are automatically trusted in your browser. So those kind right. of certificates, they can self-manage, but production certificates, that's just a small set of uh, company administrators who, who can create those kind of certificates. So we were thinking about making this more or less self-managed. So then I also looked into um, uh, Let's Encrypt and the ACME protocol like how you can automate retrieval of those certificates and renewal and, and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So now we, we are talking about moving more or less into this TLS certificate kind of approach. Um, I was thinking, wouldn't it be smart if we would integrate with this ACME protocol where you can also benefit from from automation and, and standardized APIs, which which are already there, done by Let's Encrypt and and, and others. So there are um, some concerns uh, with Acme, um, and um, I think that's one we can discuss further. Uh, I think that's actually worth a conversation in terms of what are the kind of automations we'd want to put in place. Uh, and there could potentially be things in terms of like, you know, uh, whichever domain you trust, things like that. And there's a few different approaches to that. Like you could do it through automation from, for example, like if you were trusting domains, you can do that through domain validation. Um, you can do that through email validation as well. If you wanted to do sort of like email validated certs, uh, there's a few different mechanisms to do that. Um, but I think, yes, you're absolutely right. Like exploring. Uh, the different automation options and seeing if any one of those would make mm -hmm. sense. I think that's something we can uh, so, potentially so I, look at. So what I do personally to get my certificates, for example, is uh, I, I own my personal domain. So I use the DNS mm -hmm. uh, challenge. So that allows mm -hmm. me to just create all certificates for my local host. Um, um, I, I just uh, update my host file put, for example, my DNS name in there and I just request certificates for my local host uh, part. So that's based on the DNS challenge. And now let's, let's take this scenario where you have a CI job, which takes care of signing your images. 
and this CI right. job needs to get uh, his own signing key. So then it, it might make sense to, to securely uh, provide a, a signing key. Maybe that delegation key is just valid for, for 10 minutes for the, for the lifetime of the CI job where it can self register this uh, certificate, um, maybe based on some new ACME uh, challenge we could validate as, that this CI job is allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. And then after this, uh, this CI job finishes, then this certificate uh, kind of expires automatically. Meaning you can never leave certificates uh, uh, flying around on CI servers and stuff like that, which is of course also a security risk. Right. Um, I think there the uh, one other component uh, that does come in um, through some things like that is you'd also need to um, get a, a timestamp signature on that. Um, and so uh, that timestamp signature would need to get created uh, outside of the uh, of the uh, uh, the build pipeline, right? Uh, out of the outside of the CI system for the uh, certificate time to be trusted. Uh, so I think that's um, that kind of automation could make sense. Um, I think that's one where um, let's add those two ideas to like so I think the first one is the uh, automation and then getting certs from sort of like a public CA. Uh, and then the second one that we were looking at, uh, would be making sort of like, you know, short-lived certs uh, that uh, make sense for sort of like the CI, uh, uh, CI CD pipelines, right? Uh, and then the short-lived certs, I think they add in sort of like an external timestamp uh, requirement um, to make sure that you trust the, uh, the, the validity period, of, like the signature was generated during the validity period. Um, I think those are both things that we can uh, have a wider discussion on. For the automation, um, for the next uh, meeting that we have, um, I'll, I'll I'll come up with a short presentation on the uh, the different mechanisms we have for that. Um, so I know that we can do sort of like domain-based challenges. We can also do sort of like CNAME configurations. Um, I think the the one thing that comes in here though is now um, to publish a container. Um, you also need to now own a domain. Right. Um, and so whether we want to go down the route of domains or emails, I think there's a few different options we can explore. Um, I, I, I want I'll, I'll bring in sort of like a more exhaustive list and we can run through those automation options and see which ones make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think for, for the rest, I think the, the list is uh, pretty complete, which you, you are showing in this uh, PR. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the, the thing we are mainly concerned about is uh, how do we manage the, those keys? How do we uh, also revoke people when, when they are leaving the company or switching departments? Uh, so from that right. aspect, we were looking at it. Um, uh, yeah, what we, we currently do is just deploy the solution many times for every registry uh, we have. Uh, we might invest some time on this web uh, application so you can actually uh, have uh, have one deployment of this to, to manage uh, many notary servers. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, the only thing which, uh, yeah, we need to check in notary v2 is then uh, how the, the synchronization of uh, of these things would happen if there are many notary servers so i think uh what i'll do today is add in what um uh, the notary server like what role it is serving here and kind of what the key management component is serving for uh, within yeah. the publishing environment, right? Because yeah, so I think, I, I, I think the key, uh, key management should, should just be a client on top of the notary server to uh, to create those certificates. Um, so currently notary or Docker trust, they, they store that in this uh, local folder. Uh, that's yeah. also what we did uh, with this web application. So this web application has its own local folder where the, the keys are stored currently. Um, 
depending on on time I I can get for that, I I could also do a small POC to store the keys in um, in HashiCorp Vault, for example. Um, yeah, and for that uh, you already have a lot of uh, items in this list, like uh, defining an interface, so so um, cloud providers can can implement their own um, uh, storage. Yeah, I, I I think that is that's already covered. Um, yeah, and the other thing we are currently investigating is uh, what if uh, a developer loses uh, his uh, delegation key? He was the li last guy who signed the image. Uh, how do we do the rotation and uh, replace that key so so we can still continue to release images? Okay. Um, I think those are all great suggestions. Um, I'm going to get those in by noon and share it uh, um, uh, in the Slack channel. Uh, and then we can take a, a, a quick sort of like review uh, with the larger audience on Monday uh, and see where everyone's at. Um, do you, I, I think you, the, the Monday meeting time usually falls out of regular hours for you, right? Um, I guess so. Let me check the calendar. Uh, do, do you know the, the time for that meeting? Uh, yeah, that one's usually uh, two hours late. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, 7 p.m. So it depends uh, if my wife has to work. She, she works with shifts. So I have to take care of most of these times. Uh, I need to take care of my kid, which okay. is kind of her bad time. Uh, it's kind of the time she needs to go to bed. So then I'm uh, always <laughs> busy right. taking her to bed. And so in, in, incidentally, I, I can join probably, but uh, I cannot not, uh, always tell that up front. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and sort of like, if there's any takeaways from that, we can summarize that and kind of discuss that on the Friday meeting again, uh, in terms of next steps, but, uh, thanks for the feedback. Uh, I think those are all uh, sort of like, uh, valid suggestions. And so I'll work on incorporating those. So, uh, do we also need to, uh, update a hack the, uh, meeting notes? Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead and update those meeting notes. Um, yeah, I never used HackMD, so I only read the meeting notes, but uh, let me see how this works. I think we can also work together in those meeting notes, right? Yeah, so yeah. there's a pen icon, I think, on the left side. Uh, let me actually copy in the meeting template. Uh, by the way, I just joined. I'm sorry for being late. We had a tap. Uh, Tough, like standardization meeting that um, took the full amount of time and then some. Um, it sounds like you guys might be wrapping up. Is that correct? Um, well, the meeting was scheduled for a full hour. Uh, I think uh, uh, Marco usually needs to hop off, uh, but I think Trishank was supposed to join late as well. So um, I can actually stay on for the full hour and um, uh, go through the so what I'm essentially doing is right now is I put out a pull request. So I was getting uh, feedback on that. Uh, if you want to read through the pull request, uh, we can go through it and I'll make some revisions then for the audience on Monday. Great. Okay. Um, Trishank had mentioned he was planning to join this call. So I expect I'll, we'll see him in a minute or two, but yeah, that would be great. Um, where is the, uh, is this posted in the Notary V2 channel, or where's the document that we're looking at? Uh, I just put it in the chat room again. Uh, Perfect. It's uh, in the Git. Um, okay. I got it. Okay. Yeah, I think Zoom doesn't show me chat history before I logged in, unfortunately. Um, so, Sonias, do we um, uh, did you take notes on, uh, on the feedback feedback I, I gave? Or? Yeah, I was taking it down on pen and paper because that was easier for me. Uh, I'm gonna just add it to the HackMD notes. Cool, cool. So I I have to leave in a couple of minutes. Um, so I'll stay around for a couple of minutes till I have to leave.
Okay, yeah, I have a couple, I have a few things I'm just sort of noticing as I'm reading through that are just like basic questions. Is this, is it okay for me to just start like asking things now or let me, let me think Trishank again, because once again, he said he was joining. Sure. Um, I think whatever is easiest, like if you want to read for the whole one and then we can go through questions or uh, uh, whatever is easier. It's like I initially had planned on sharing this doc before the meeting, which I didn't get, unfortunately, get a chance to. So um, um, either works for me. I guess like one of the big questions I have relates to you. You talk about like publisher shares the key. And um, to me, that's like a big, there's like a big question about how that sharing happens and who it's shared with and why someone trusts that they're getting the right uh, public key. Um, I'm just wondering if you can, like, I, can you talk a little more about that or am I thinking about this the right way or the wrong way or you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah I, I completely get that question. And I think that's one of the conversations I want to have uh, with the group uh, is uh, identifying uh, what that sharing mechanism is, right? Um, because what we're essentially trying to get to is how does a publisher identify themselves to a uh, deployer uh, without really having to rely on uh, a registry, right? Uh, I think that's one of the key goals of, uh, of, of getting signing enabled through Notary V2. Um, and so one of the options there is that the existing Notary service that we have today, uh, where you're sharing signatures, um, that gets more turned into one where you are sharing key material. Um, and this would this could give you two options: one where you're relying on a third-party shared key material store, or you are setting up your own key material store. Um, and I think there are different options there that we need to talk through in terms of implications. Um, but at a very high level, um, essentially, what this is saying is that um, in the signing environment, these are the tasks that we need to take care of, and in the deployment environment, here are the tasks we need to take care of. Um, and then the part that we need to still flush out a little bit more is what does that key sharing mechanism look like? Does that answer the question? It, it does in part. Um, it's great because it's one of those answers that, that wants me, makes me want to ask like four other questions. So it's like, it was perfect. Um, the, I guess like you talked before about um, like the, the, previous uh, model using something where um, the, um, like basically you said it was signatures rather than keys in, in uh, the previous tough model. And can you just tell me a little about what you mean there? So with uh, notary V1, right, um, you are, when you're querying the notary server, um, you are getting a, uh, uh, as I understand the implementation, um, you are getting uh, all the different uh, sort of uh, signature files, right? Um, or the, the target JSON, the root JSON, the timestamp JSON, right? Um, so those are all um, analogous to certificates and signatures. Um, I think the shift that would make a little bit more sense is if you move more into the model of trusted roots and trusted intermediates uh, and have the uh, individual signatures for the images uh, be transported with the containers themselves, right? Um, and so that's kind of like what um, uh, I was envisioning would make the uh, the container image sharing much more easier uh, in the sense that uh, the, 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 the signature for the container itself would move with the container, uh, but then the, the trust uh, sort of like roots and intermediates and revocation lists would leave, live more in sort of like the centralized service, if you will. So, so right, maybe, okay. maybe this summarizes, it's more relying on, on the standards like TLS certificates where you have uh, root certificates, intermediates, uh, server certificates, client certificates, 
revocation list and, and those kind of things. Is, is, uh, is that a correct understanding? Yeah, it would be something uh, analogous to that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, there's, there tend to be a lot of operational problems with that model with respect to, like, there's a reason why um, we didn't go that route with, with top. Um, um, but I, I want to, like, Trishank has now joined. Um, and I wanted to have a, like a, a little more of an understanding, like what the advantage is of, of what you, like, of the way in which you're describing things. Because if you link, um, if you like embed signatures in some way in um, more directly in the OCI metadata, um, then this uh, has a whole bunch of uh, potential downsides in that you can't really have multiple people sign the same thing. And um, the signatures are also separated um, from many contexts about the party doing the signing. And so you always have to have some way to link that back to the, um, like, like to, to understand why you should trust this party and how you should trust them. The kind of, I think the, the problem you're trying to solve with, um, with like sharing the keys and, um, uh, like a lot of the issues related to revocation, um, I, I think um, are a lot harder to do in, in the sort of um, TLS model because it wasn't really built with revocation as a first class primitive. And it wasn't really built with like, um, I, I, I feel like I'm not, I'm not explaining this in a convincing way. Like I, I almost feel like I need a, like a whiteboard and for us to talk through some examples of, of the issue here. Um, let, let me back up, let me back up a moment and um, Trishank, are, are you on the call? Yep. Okay. Um, may, since I, this is my first time joining this group and I'm aware, like I feel very much like I'm stepping into um, like you guys' backyard and talking trash and I don't, I, I'm not trying to do that. Um, I, I just want to, I, I really am just trying to understand what's going on here. Maybe since you've been more engaged, you can you can um, discuss and talk about what uh, the key management scenarios document and stuff in a better way than I can. Yeah, sure. Um, unfortunately, I just walked into the meeting myself. This is actually my first time joining, and so I'm I'm also missing some context as you are. Um, I do agree with your point about mapping signatures to roles rather than uh, files themselves because you're missing context about who did what. That's the first thing. I do agree. The second thing is, again, I, I don't want to talk without missing, uh, by missing, having missed a lot of context. But when I hear things like revocation list, I get slightly worried because that hasn't worked out well in TLS, as we've all seen. Nobody actually checks for uh, revocation because it's very expensive the way it's commonly done. So nobody really effectively does yep. it. So if we can do better, that would be great. That's all. I, I, I agree with that feedback. And I think uh, in terms of setting context, this is really the first time we're looking at this more detailed doc. Um, and so uh, uh, please like, you know, go through it and all of this feedback is welcome. Uh, I think the goal here really is to kind of come up with something that works uh, at scale, obviously. Uh, and revocation is obviously one of the tricky parts uh, when you go into sort of like uh, uh, a, uh, a sort of uh, like trusted root configured model, right? Um, rather than sort of like having the entire uh, sort of like signature map available. So I think there's trade-offs on either side. Uh, I think the question here is really highlighting these trade-offs and identifying um, what makes sense. So I think uh, any of the feedback here is absolutely welcome. 
Um, the way the approach that I was kind of thinking of this more was triggered less around sort of like, you know, yes, uh, uh, the roles do matter. Uh, I think here the roles are classified more in terms of the uh, the roots and the intermediates uh, that is telling you who actually signed uh, the artifact in terms of like, you know, whether you're trusting a company, in which case you might trust a root. Uh, if you're trusting sort of like individual developers, those could be individual intermediates. Um, we can go up and down the tree and sort of like, you know, make this uh, as complicated or as uh, simple as sort of like, you know, the use cases require. Um, the part about sort of like the signature kind of being available with the artifact uh, makes the validation uh, somewhat easier in the sense that, um, you know, if you have a, uh, a, a trust root configuration, um, that's worked for a lot of other code signing use cases as well, right? And I think the question here is in terms of comparison, uh, what do we gain by either model um, and what are the changes? I think uh, part of uh, uh, where we want to take this is uh, one, the, the core requirements that come in is that the notary server uh, needs to be independent of registries. So you could use the same notary across multiple registries. Uh, and the other part of it, I think that's a core requirement. Uh, is, uh, you know, the, the aspect of like, you know, notary uh, um, servers potentially being private and public and uh, being accessible. I think outside of that, how the PKI is set up, how the signatures are, are set up, I think is something that's open for discussion. So um, this is kind of like, I think, like a starting point. So um, I'd like to get sort of like pushback in terms of like what we see as the concerns here uh, and how those are potentially addressed in something uh, in, in more potentially like even a hybrid solution, if you will. But um, uh, if we start from there, um, I think uh, what are the concerns here? Uh, and let's see if we can't figure out how to address them. Does that sound fair? Yeah, that, that, is, that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In fact, some of, some of your use cases you talked about, such as trust routes choosing on the level of the whole registry or, or particular developers or on a company level, are interesting. These are actually some questions that we have explored recently ourselves. We just got up on a call about one of these features. Um, and, and it's a fair question about what we gain by not by associating signatures directly with files instead of different, different, different roles, right? This, this sort of indirection. Um, it's a good question. I mean, we certainly should weigh the pros and cons and talk about which one, which one is the best thing going forward. Okay, so uh, Niels, in the meantime, I uh, I wrote down um, some of the feedback I gave you in the in the meeting notes, with with some of the open questions. I'm not entirely sure if I captured everything we discussed in in the first uh, half of this meeting. Um, I think that captures it all. I'll compare it against the notes I took, uh, and if there's anything else, I'll add them in afterwards. So I'll, I'll have to drop off now, but um, yeah, just keep me posted. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll just check Slack uh, on a daily basis. And uh, if anything is required for my side, just let me know. Sounds good, thank you. Cool. Thanks guys. Bye. Marco. Bye. Later. Later. Marco. So Nia, sorry, I also missed some context about, so uh, where is it best to collaborate on this document? Is it on the GitHub repository? Uh, yes, uh, if you can provide comments there, we can go through that. Uh, that way we also have a record of like, you know, what the feedback we got and make sure that those are being addressed as we go through. Got it, thanks. Yeah, I apologize, I didn't have enough uh, I didn't get this stuff in early enough where I could share it earlier in the Slack channel. Uh, I'm going to try and get revisions out on Wednesdays uh, going forward. Oh, no worries. I mean, I apologize. I didn't go through it myself. So, so one thing I'm, I'm also kind of trying to wrap my head around here. And I'm sorry if I'm like, this might seem like a small point, but maybe it's important. Maybe it's not. Um, but uh, one thing I really like you say is in parentheses, a lot of times you say what you're trying to achieve. 
by doing this action. Like mm -hmm. uh, publisher shares the root public key so other users can verify the containers before running them. Um, but really, um, you know, your goal is the thing in parentheses and the, the, you know, like I, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not saying I can imagine a scenario where they don't have to have the key, but if somehow there were a scenario where they didn't have to have the public key to achieve that, then you wouldn't need to share the public key, for instance. Um, just like, um, if you, for some reason, had no delegated keys at all in the system, I don't know why you would, anyone would think that was a good idea, but let's say you didn't do that. Um, then you wouldn't need the publisher creates new delegate keys on local machine that change a root key step. But I imagine what you're trying to achieve with that is you're trying to make it so that, um, you know, like, someone has the ability to be able to sign for parts of things and you also have the ability to use multiple keys that like for instance different developers can have their own key is that is that right or do, do you see what i mean because like um some of these i can understand directly the the reason for this and some of these i I guess, and I might guess correctly, but I'm, I'm not sure I'm guessing right. No, that's actually a good call out. Um, I think um, part of this was something that I did want to talk about in this group. Um, should we actually prevent signing uh, of container images with the root keys? Because uh, the root key is essentially um, translating into a root identity, right? Uh, and if the root key is readily available, then uh, potentially it is something that could be easily compromised. Um, there are sort of like implications around sort of like, you know, like you're having to more frequently update roots or more frequently kind of like rotate your roots and get that information out. Um, so one of the things that I was kind of thinking about here was that, you know, if we come up with a key architecture where uh, the root key is not something you can use to sign images with, uh, and you potentially have to use a delegate key for signing, um, does that help us improve the security posture of how uh, even developers, like, you know, doing an initial setup, like how their keys are managed? Uh, one of the things we could potentially uh, leverage here is we could add in a key store requirement, uh, where right now I believe uh, in Notary, the keys are kept in a folder, uh, rather than that, could be potentially used like a Java key store or some other key store where you're at least adding some level of protection where they're not like readily available. Um, and if the root key isn't being frequently used, then really, you know, uh, it's really the delegate key that if you potentially get compromised, in which case you, in case you could just, you know, uh, rotate that, create a new delegate key uh, and use that. Uh, and so that's kind of like where, uh, uh, where I was thinking about that, where, uh, we would now actually require everyone to kind of use a delegate key for signing. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and also how you do that rotation securely and things is also really tricky to do. Um, right. It, it's something like we, we've seen a lot of big organizations where basically they just push an update sign with the old key to try to rotate the key out when it's compromised. And the problem is that the yeah. attacker already has the old key too. So, you know, that's not, not great um, to put it mildly. Um, yeah, I think there's, there, there's a bunch of stuff in here where I think if I, I, I wonder if at times, if you could just explain like the outcome to like what, like the purpose of doing the thing Rather than like the client, the publisher will do X, but why, why they want to do something like this? Because um, I think it's it's easier then for us to go and see, like like the immediate thing I, I'm trying to do here is to try to reason about um, like you know a hypothetical design that would do this that used um, like metadata on the OCI images and use something like 
TLS to try to do key management versus um, doing something like tough. And I'm trying to figure out mm -hmm. like where the gaps are in the solutions. And um, it's, it's kind of hard to do that in places because some of this is written, I think, with, um, with a design in mind rather than the outcome. I think that's actually a fair call out. Um, I think I can actually elaborate on why these different steps are being taken and what they're accomplishing. Um, and um, like, frankly, like, you know, if there's a better story for uh, getting the revocation information out in terms of like, you know, if you're able to lock down routes and um, there's some sort of like signed metadata that's going out, like, you know, the same way that the tough uh, sort of like framework currently works, I think there's potentially a hybrid there. And I think uh, you've actually called out one of the uh, concerns that we had with Notary V1, where to get a root rotation, you had to sign with the old root, right? And so if that root was compromised, I agree with you there, that's not the best solution. And so I think really kind of teasing it apart, like what does a root revocation look like versus what does a delegate revocation look like? Uh, I think if we can build in sort of like automation um, where you're not necessarily having to go to a CRL to kind of do that, like that's great. Uh, and so I think I will, what I'll do as a next step here uh, is add in some of the motivations. And I think you're absolutely right. Like that will make that conversation much easier. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, we only have like a few minutes left. Um, are, I, I'm going to take in sort of like the suggestions I've gotten here uh, and, 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 and make some changes to the pull request and push it out today. Uh, and then um, I'm going to ask uh, Steve for like 30 minutes on the Monday meeting to kind of go through additional comments and stuff. And I think that'll be a more fruitful uh, discussion. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Was there any other comments that come up uh, and, and, and that I could potentially address? I don't know. Let me take a look at it and I might add comments to the PR if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, I feel like I kind of need that level of clarification before I, I can thrash and kind of add comments, but I, I don't want to do that. I'd rather have like a yep. few very I, comments. Yep, I'm going to post uh, in the Slack channel once I have the comments added in. So feel free to take a look at the request after those are in. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, thank you, Nias, for, for mm -hmm. organizing this. It's a very badly needed meeting. <laughs> yeah, and we're sorry that we were late. We will, um, you know, we'll try to arrange things in the future so that we don't overlap with this and we can make this meeting. Uh, yeah, no worries. Uh, I think I had to change the meeting invite time as well. Um, I think that like uh, Marco has been pretty interested in the key management side of things as well. So I think 7.30 to 8.30 Pacific time uh, seems to work for people that are most interested in this side of the topic. So uh, we'll keep this hour going. Uh, but thanks for coming in and uh, giving the feedback. I think all of it's very useful. Thanks. Thank you for being so gracious about it as well. Um, Awesome. All right. Well, we'll see you uh, in the next meeting, hopefully. All right. Sounds good. Have a good weekend. See you. Yeah, you too. Thank you.